Hey people of YouTube, this video is going to cover the complete installation of the 52 inch North Pond indoor outdoor ceiling fan by Hampton Bay. If you just want to fast forward to any individual step along the way, use the links below. That will take you to each individual step. That way you don't have to watch this whole video. But you can watch it. It's good. If you find this video helpful at the end, please click like and subscribe. That will help other people find the video as well. But we're ready to go. This fan is a wet rated fan, so it's perfect for use in any outdoor location. Looks good indoors as well. It includes some quick fit installation features that's going to make the installation process a lot easier and quicker. It's got a slide on mounting bracket. It's got the AccuArm blade arms with captive screws. It's got the quick install blades. It even includes two LED bulbs for your convenience. They've thought of everything with this. It's a tri-mount fan. You can hang it without the down rod on a low ceiling. You can hang it on a standard ceiling with the included down rod, or even on a higher angled ceiling with an extension down rod that's sold separately. Now before we get started, just a couple of notes. Turn off your electricity. Make sure the electricity is turned off at the breaker box and at the wall switch before beginning. If you don't feel comfortable working around electricity, please consult with a licensed electrician. This is a super easy project. We're going to walk you through step by step, but again, if you don't feel comfortable, just call a pro. Next up, the outlet box. If you're placing this fan where you just had a light kit on the ceiling, you're going to want to make sure that the outlet box is clearly marked acceptable for fan support. You don't want to install this fan on one of those thin little plastic flimsy outlet boxes. You want to make sure that it's metal and that it's marked acceptable for fan support. So as you can see here, we've already unpacked the fan and we've opened up the manual. We're just going to check to make sure that we have all the parts. That way we don't get stuck along the way with a missing part, if that were the case. But it's not. We have everything. We're just going to go through everything right now. So, first up, mounting bracket. The mounting bracket comes pre-installed inside the canopy and the canopy ring. We'll show you in the first step how to remove that to get started. You have five reversible blades, five blade arms, and like we said, these have the captive screws in there. It makes installation super easy. The ball and down rod assembly, the decorative motor collar cover, this is the light kit, this is the glass bowl, Got the two LED bulbs, got a hardware pack. The hardware pack has a rubber gasket if you're mounting it flush mount. It's got pull chain extensions, plastic wire nuts, the hanger pin and locking pin, and a rubber gasket to seal the switch cup. This is your fan motor. Now, you'll see this tag here. This tag is just pointing out that there's an access hole in the switch cup. The screwdriver is gonna go through there to be able to attach the blade arms. Super easy, we're gonna cover this in detail along the way. So we got everything here, just some tools we're going to need for this easy project. Screwdriver, Phillips head, we like to use a long one or a short one. Some wire cutters and strippers. Line voltage tester to make sure the wires aren't live. If you're installing this without the light kit, you'll need either a wrench or a pair of pliers. Some electrical tape, and of course a ladder. Now we're going to walk you through step by step. You can take this thing and toss it. We're going to do this together. The mounting bracket comes pre-installed inside the canopy with the canopy ring attached. To remove the mounting bracket, first twist the canopy ring counterclockwise to expose the screws. You'll notice that there are two slotted screws and two standard screws located on either side of the canopy. Begin by removing and saving the two standard screws. Next, loosen, but do not remove, the two screws in the J slots. Once those two screws are loosened, simply twist the mounting bracket and lift it up to remove it from the canopy. This fan features a slide-on mounting bracket for easy installation. The mounting bracket has two slots on the top that will align with the two screws in the outlet box. To install the bracket, you'll loosen the screws in the outlet box and then align the screws with the slots in the mounting bracket. This is just a close-up demonstration of how it's done. To install the mounting bracket, use a Phillips head screwdriver to first loosen but not remove the screws in the outlet box in the ceiling. Next, feed the house supply wires through the hole in the top of the mounting bracket, then align the slots of the mounting bracket with the screws in the outlet box and slide it into place. Then use a Phillips head screwdriver to completely tighten both outlet box screws.
If installing without the down rod, skip to the next section, preparing for flush mount installation. For down rod installation, begin by first loosening but not removing the two set screws on the motor collar using a Phillips head screwdriver. Next, unwrap the wires and gently stretch them out. Once the wires are stretched out, it's a good idea to twist the ends together to make it easier to feed through the down rod. Feed the wires through the decorative canopy ring so that it rests on top of the motor housing. Make sure the notches of the canopy ring face towards the ceiling. Next, gently pull the green ground cable from inside the ball and down rod assembly. Insert the ball and down rod assembly through the top of the canopy so that the down rod comes out the smallest hole in the canopy. Then, slide the decorative motor collar cover on so that the largest hole is towards the bottom. Then, feed the wires through the bottom of the ball and down rod assembly so that the wires exit from the ball portion of the ball and down rod assembly. Gently pull the wires through. Then slide the down rod to the motor collar on top of the motor. Align the holes with the bottom of the down rod with the holes in the motor collar at the top of the motor. Use the locking pin and hanger pin included in the hardware pack to secure the down rod to the motor collar. With the holes aligned in the down rod and the motor collar, gently insert the hanger pin through one hole of the motor collar so that it exits through the opposite side. Make sure not to jam the wires inside the down rod. Once the hanger pin is through the motor collar, Secure it by placing the locking pin in the holes at the end of the hanger pin. Finish the down rod installation by securely tightening the two set screws in the motor collar using a Phillips head screwdriver. Once those two screws are tightened, slide the decorative motor collar cover down to the fan. If installing with the down rod, skip to the next section, trimming the wires. If installing this fan without the down rod, you'll need to attach the canopy to the top of the motor housing. Begin this process by removing and saving three of the six screws on top of the motor housing. Simply remove and save every other screw. Next, remove the decorative ring from the bottom of the canopy by pressing on the three studs inside the canopy. This will allow you to remove the ring. Next, feed the wires through the rubber grommet that's included in the hardware pack and slide the grommet down to the top of the motor housing. You'll notice the large holes of the rubber grommet will fit over the screws in the motor housing and the small screw holes will fit over the screw holes from the screws that were removed. Next, feed the wires through the decorative canopy ring. Make sure that the notches of the canopy ring are facing towards the ceiling. Then feed the wires through the bottom of the canopy and place the canopy on top of the rubber grommet. You'll notice that there are notched cutouts inside the canopy that align with the screws that are remaining in the motor housing, and the screw holes of the canopy will align with the screw holes from the screws that were removed and saved. Replace each of those three screws using a Phillips head screwdriver and completely tighten those three screws. Once those three screws are completely tightened, the fan is ready to be hung. If installing this fan with the included down rod, it's a good idea to cut and strip the wires before hanging it. To do so, measure about a foot from the top of the ball and down rod assembly and cut the wires. Then using the strippers, strip off about three quarters of an inch of insulation from each wire. Once the wires are stripped, twist each end to make sure that there are no frayed ends. Now the fan is ready to be hung. If installing without the down rod, skip to the next section, hanging the fan flush mount. Before hanging the fan, it's important to note the tab inside the mounting bracket. This tab will align with the slot in the ball of the ball and down rod assembly. When hanging the fan, 
you'll insert the ball into the mounting bracket and then rotate so that that slot engages the tab in the mounting bracket. You'll feel the fan sit into place when the slot engages the tab. Hang the fan in the mounting bracket by lifting the entire fan assembly up to the mounting bracket. Note the location of the slot in the ball and the tab in the mounting bracket. Slide the ball into the mounting bracket and then rotate the assembly until you feel the slot engage the tab in the mounting bracket. Again, you'll feel the fan sit in place when the slot engages the tab. If installing the fan with the down rod, skip ahead to the next section, wiring the fan. Before hanging the fan close to ceiling style, it's important to note the hook on the mounting bracket that will go into the hole of the canopy to hold the fan in place during wiring. This close-up is just a demonstration. To hang the fan for wiring, locate the hook on the mounting bracket and align that with the hole in the canopy and insert the hook into the hole of the canopy. Do not leave the fan unattended while it is hanging like this. Begin wiring the fan by taking the green wire from the mounting bracket and the green wire from the down rod and twisting those two wires together. Once those wires are twisted together, connect those wires with the bare copper wire from the house supply line. These are the ground wires. Then secure the connection using an included plastic wire nut and a piece of electrical tape. Then gently tuck the wire up into the outlet box and mounting bracket. Next, take the white wire from the fan and connect that wire to the white neutral wire from the house supply lines. Twist those two wires together and finish the connection using an included plastic wire nut and a piece of electrical tape. Once that connection is finished, gently tuck that wire into the mounting bracket. Next, take the black wire and the blue wires from the fan and twist those two wires together. Once those wires are twisted together, Connect those wires with the black or hot wire from the house supply line. Twist all three wires together and finish the connection using an included plastic wire nut and a piece of electrical tape. Once that connection is made, gently tuck all the wires into the mounting bracket to make room for the canopy to attach to the mounting bracket. If installing this fan with the down rod, skip ahead to the next section attaching the canopy downrod installation. Lift the fan motor assembly off the mounting bracket and align the J slots of the canopy with the screws that were loosened but not removed in the mounting bracket. Make sure the wires are all tucked into the canopy and then press up and twist to engage the screws in the J slots. Secure the canopy using the two screws that were removed and saved in the first step. Insert the screws into the standard screw holes and use a Phillips head screwdriver to completely tighten these two screws. Once those two screws are completely tightened, completely tighten the two screws that were in the J slots of the canopy. If installing the fan without the down rod, skip ahead to the next section attaching the canopy ring. Attach the canopy to the mounting bracket by aligning the J slots with the screws that were loosened in the mounting bracket. Then lift the canopy up Engage those slots and twist. This will hold the canopy in place. Secure the canopy using the two screws that were removed and saved in the first step. Insert the screw into the standard screw hole and then use a Phillips head screwdriver to completely tighten all four screws. Attach the decorative canopy ring by aligning the slots of the canopy ring with the screws in the canopy. Then lift the canopy up and twist to engage those screws. This will lock the canopy ring in place. The fan is shipped with rubber motor stops to prevent the motor moving during shipment. Before installing the blade arms, you'll first need to remove the rubber motor stops from the bottom of the motor. Insert the Phillips head screwdriver through the access hole in the switch cup, and then loosen and remove the rubber motor stops. You can discard these once removed.
The AccuArm blade arms feature an alignment post that will align with the long slot in the base of the motor. Insert that alignment post into the long slot, which will align the captive screws to the screw holes. Insert a Phillips head screwdriver through the screwdriver access hole in the switch cup and tighten each of the two screws. Repeat this process for the four remaining blade arms. Once all five blade arms have been installed, it's a good idea to go back and double check that all the screws are completely tightened. This fan features quick install blades. There are three keyhole slots on the blades that will align with the three posts on the blade arms. When installing the blades, you'll align the keyhole slots with the posts and then press down and pull away from the fan to lock the blade in place. There's a spring clip mechanism that will snap in place when properly installed. This is just a demonstration. The blades are reversible, so choose the finish that you'd like and make sure that finish is facing towards the floor. Then align the keyhole slots of the blades with the post on the blade arms, press down and pull away from the fan to lock the blade in place. Repeat this process for the four remaining blades. Once all of the blade arms have been installed, insert the rubber plug included in the hardware pack into the screwdriver access hole in the switch cup. This will help seal the switch cup from water intrusion for outdoor use. The light kit attaches to the fan using three screws that are pre-installed in the light kit switch cap. Those three screws will align with the three screw holes in the switch cup at the base of the fan. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, remove and save the three screws in the switch cap. Next, gently pull the light kit wires from the switch cup at the base of the fan. There will be a blue wire and a white wire, both with molded adapter plugs at the end. Connect the light kit's black wire to the fan's blue wire and the light kit's white wire to the fan's white wire using these adapter plugs. Once the wire connections have been made, gently tuck the wires into the light kit and the switch cup. Note the notch cutout on the light kit. This cutout will align with the reverse switch on the side of the switch cup. Align the notch cutout with the reverse switch and align the holes in the light kit with the holes in the switch cup and then gently press the light kit into the fan. While holding the light kit in place, insert one of the three screws that was removed and saved at the beginning of this step. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to completely tighten this screw. Then repeat for the two remaining screws. Before installing the glass bowl, you'll need to unscrew the finial from the threaded post at the bottom of the light kit. Unscrew the finial and remove the bowl cap. Then unscrew the hex nut and remove the hex nut and washer from the threaded post. The fan includes two LED bulbs. To install the bulbs, simply screw them into the sockets. Then, thread the pull chain from the light kit through the center hole of the bolt, and push up so that the threaded post comes through the center hole. The light bulb will fit nicely into the light kit pan. Next, slide the rubber washer over the pull chain and onto the threaded post of the light kit. Hold the bowl in place, and then thread the hex nut over the pull chain and onto the threaded post of the light kit. Finger tighten the hex nut onto the threaded post. Do not use any tools or over tighten this nut as it may cause the glass to crack. Next, feed the pull chain through the center hole of the bowl cap and place that on the threaded post. Secure the bowl cap and the light kit by feeding the pull chain through the finial and screw the finial onto the threaded post. Simply finger tighten the finial. Do not over tighten. Before attaching the pull chain extensions, you'll need to route the pull chain for the fan speed control through the pull chain guide on the top of the light kit. Unwrap the pull chain and feed the end of the pull chain through the pull chain guide. A 
attach the pull chain extensions to the ends of the pull chains. The pull chain extensions are located in the hardware pack. They have an easy snap connector to attach them to the ends of the pull chains. Pull the light chain one time to turn it on and again to turn it off. Pull the fans pull chain once for high speed, twice for medium speed, three times for low speed, and again to turn it off. This fan features a three-speed reversible motor. The manual reverse switch is located right above the light kit on the fan switch cup and is enclosed in a rubber casing to protect it from the elements. The factory default is switch left to create a downward airflow for use in the warmer months. Switch right creates an upward airflow to draw warm air from the ceiling for use in the cooler months. Make sure the fan is off before changing the reverse switch position. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, remove and save the three screws in the switch cap. To install this fan without the light kit, you'll need to remove the switch cap from the light kit. Using a pair of pliers or a small wrench, loosen and remove the hex nut inside the switch cap. Then turn the switch cap counterclockwise to unscrew it from the threaded post of the light kit. Then gently pull the light kit wires one by one through the center hole of the switch cap to remove it. Next, use the plastic center plug that was included in the hardware kit and press it in the center hole of the switch cap with your thumb. Before attaching the switch cap to the fan, note the large cutout on the switch cap that will align with the reverse switch. There's another cutout that will align with the pull chain. Align those notched cutouts with the reverse switch in the pull chain and place the switch cap into the switch cup of the fan. Adjust the switch cap to align the screw holes in the switch cup. Use the three screws that were removed and saved to secure the switch cap to the fan. Congratulations, that's it. Your ceiling fan installation is now complete. Time to kick back, relax with a nice tall beverage, and enjoy your new ceiling fan. Thanks for watching. And if you found this video helpful, please click like and subscribe down below, and that'll help other people find the video as well. And as we always say around here, keep it breezy.